Good afternoon. Welcome to this Bitch Alterman Memorial Webinar presented by the Brain Injury Association of America. Today's webinar is on creativity throughout brain injury recovery. Before we begin the webinar, I want to note that all attendees are muted. If you have a question, you may submit a written one using the control box question feature, and I'll read it aloud to Ali uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, but please, we invite you to, at any time, please type in your question. Uh, let's go ahead and begin. So Ali Rayum is an encouraging light in the journey of overcoming brain injury. She writes microblogs on social media and engages in public speaking to help multiply hope, provide new perspectives, and apply her gift of teaching to educate and advocate. Ali is the community manager of Concussion Compass, an involved member of the Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts and of America, and serves on the Brain Injury Council of Massachusetts. She's passionate about people and bringing community together. Ali also started the brand Embracing Unique to share her art and creativity, while reminding people to honor who they are and what they bring to the world. Welcome, Ali. Hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to get into this today. And I will start by sharing my screen, or can we see it? We can see it. Oh, um, I cannot now. I'm not sorry about that. I'm not sure what we changed here, but can you see my screen now? Yes. So you can see the presentation. We're good to go. Yes. Oh, yay. Okay. Thank you so much for all the grace, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here. So as introduced, thank you so much. I am Allie. And thank you to the Brain Injury Association of America for having me today. And we're going to be talking all about creativity through brain injury cover recovery. So a little bit more about me, like who is this person even presenting today? I am a TBI survivor, and I'll get more into that story shortly. I also consider myself an encourager, a connector, creator, teacher, believer, whole bunch of things. And I purposely choose to separate the question, who am I? from what I do, because I believe that while activity is what we do and jobs are what we get paid for, who we are is part of is our identity. So with that line of separation there, um, I am also the community manager of Concussion Compass, a facilitator of a support group for the Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts, and I love public speaking. So again, I'm really excited to be here today with all of you. And if you have questions or comments anytime throughout this presentation, please feel free to use the questions or the chat feature. We're here for all of it. And in fact, if you wanna let us know where you're tuning in from today, please go ahead and put that in there as well. I would love to hear from you because we have people attending from all over. Well, I'm from Massachusetts. I know there's people everywhere. So thank you so much for being here. You know, a webinar is a webinar because you show up and you're here as an attendee and you matter and I appreciate you being here today. So with that, let's get started. The story for me of brain injury recovery begins in February of 2016. But actually, first let me paint a figurative picture for you. Prior to sustaining the brain injury, I was an outrageously active person. I was a Zumba instructor, so creativity was definitely within choreographing dances, and all of that. And then I was very much a teacher. So a standout paddleboard instructor and literally an elementary school physical education teacher. So a lot of creativity goes into creating lessons and teaching groups of people, whether adults for paddleboarding or kids in the gym. And while I am sharing more about myself prior to brain injury, I'd like to say hi to those who are saying they're from New Mexico and Colorado and Maine and Arizona. It's so good to see all of you. And in addition to those roles, I was also a coach of high school field hockey and track. And let me tell you, it definitely takes a lot of creativity to engage a bunch of high school teenagers and keep them motivated in what they're doing and to help them succeed. And then I was also a kids ministry director and a preacher and a public speaker, 
also before brain injury. So that in itself took creativity to be in my 20s and, and being a director of people that were all older than me. I had to get creative about how to engage them and then engage and being creative in messages that I was creating every time I would go to speak. So that's a little bit of the roles that I participated in and what creativity looked like for me then. And honestly, as I continue with these creative things I used to do before, I didn't even think about them as creativity. I just did them. So it wasn't until I sat down and created this presentation that I realized like, wow, these were really creative things. Like for example, making bulletin boards at my school. I loved doing this and it's just something I would do every single month, change the bulletin board, right? Or creativity for me was creating those lesson plans or coming up with ways to use equipment differently. Like during the Winter Olympics one year, like what equipment can we use to uh, imitate curling and engage the students in that way? Or I would create posters for the gym. And then outside of my jobs, I also used to embrace creativity for things like baking cakes and decorating. And again, they're just things that I would do for fun. And there's a lot of people listening right now that I'm sure are saying, well, I don't like to do any of those things, or I don't consider myself an artsy person. Here is the really neat thing is like, what even is creativity? Because yes, creativity is art. And that's one of the first things we think of with creativity. But creativity can also be things like organizing or problem solving maybe even coding and coming up with a website, creating social media content, gardening, your mindset, all of these things engage creativity because essentially when you're problem solving something, you're being creative. And who doesn't problem solve something on a daily basis? Creativity can be functional and it can also simply be a hobby. So please keep that in mind as we keep going today. And in fact, I'd love to hear from you again in the chat is, you know, what are some other things that you consider to be creative? Because we are going to talk a lot about a lot about art, but maybe you have an example that's personal for you. So if you can think of anything else that is creative, feel free to, to drop that in the chat as well. And so, okay, I promised we'd get back to the story. In February of 20, February 28th of 2016, I was struck in the face by a steel commercial door. So good thing I am a believer in the quote, when one door closes, another door opens. Uh, I have to laugh at that. I can make light of it, it's okay. Um, after that impact that I sustained, I went to the hospital and no scans or anything. I was simply told, you got a concussion, go home and rest in a dark room. Pretty, pretty cliche response back in 2016. Thankfully, times have progressed a lot in the knowledge of that, that that's not the way to go. But back then, when I was told, just go sit in a dark room, I mean, look at the person who I was prior to that injury. I was like constantly on the go in all these super, super active roles. So what does one do when they're told, you can't go on screens, you can't be in a group of people, don't go anywhere that's loud or busy, definitely don't go near an athletic field for the sake of not getting injured again. And I was like, what do I do? Life just became quiet and still. And it's at that point that I realized creativity is inside of you. And it comes out at certain times, depending where you are, what you're doing. And honestly, sometimes you don't even need to think about it. So I laugh because this poster that I'm holding in this picture, it says, I am in the middle. And on the outside, it's all positive affirmations like the list you saw in the beginning. Like, I am a believer, I am a teacher, you know, I am an encourager, I am a leader, things like that. I made this poster, I don't even remember making it. because I made it after the concussion and I, my mind was not there, but clearly my heart was. So I love to encourage people that creativity is inside of you. And sustaining the injury actually gave me a blessing of encouragement to sit down and be a little bit more still and quiet. And that's what really helped my own personal journey of creativity. Because in a, in a really fast paced world, busy, 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 it doesn't really leave a whole lot of room for that sit down engaging in creativity. And at this point, my, my mind 
began to wonder and wander and all this cool stuff started to come from it. But again, I realized that creativity is inside you even when you do get knocked down. Because at the end of 2016, unfortunately, I ended up sustaining another TBI from concussion mixed with a medication reaction, and I ended up in the hospital at a 10% functioning level. So this girl that you see in the hospital bed, very, very different from who I described as I was prior to the injury. And at this point, I had to engage creativity of mindset because I was unable to walk, talk, chew, or do any daily functioning tasks. Completely different. And I had to tell myself on a daily basis in a creative way, like, Ali, you get to do this. You don't have to do this. You get to do this. And you're blessed with this day. You made it through. Like, yeah, you're at a 10% functioning level, but at least it's not nine. <laughs> like, you know, so mindset in itself can be really creative too, especially going from an energizer bunny to being in a hospital bed. There needs to be some creativity in there. And from an actual like artistic standpoint or functional standpoint, I mean, I need to tell you, I was not engaging in anything at this time. In order to communicate, that's another form of creativity is communication. I could barely write on a piece of paper. I would have this, and I have really good handwriting, but I would have this chicken scratch handwriting on a piece of paper of one word that would take me forever to write. It would be like, hi, <laughs> or bathroom, you know, whatever the basics were. And I could not even color. And that's going to be important as you see the progression that I've had throughout this journey, because my family, my mom in the picture there, they would bring me coloring pages and try to help figure out like, what can she do uh, at this point? And uh, I couldn't even color because I didn't have the processing skills needed in order to be able to color. If someone gave me even a simple coloring page from a kid's coloring book of like a teddy bear holding a heart with really big spaces to color in, even that, I was not able to do it. I had no idea where to start, what to look at. Visually, I couldn't look at it. And I struggled to have a box of six crayons and process how to pick out a picture. I mean, excuse me, a crayon from that box of of crayons. So this was a very low functioning time for me. And um, the creativity came out in a lot of different ways at this point. I was transferred to Spalding in Charlestown after a month, I mean, excuse me, after a week at the hospital. And as you can see by the picture here, I did start progressing and realized like, why don't I embrace writing? That's creative and it is something that I can do and work on while I am laying in a hospital bed. So even if I still could not chew or walk or take a shower by myself, I could write. And that again is another mindset piece of focusing on what can I do rather than ruminating over the things of like, what am I not able to do? Because that rumination wasn't getting me anywhere. So to focus on what can I do? And as you can see on the image on the left with the task break sheet, um, I started to actually be able to write in a straight line again and to create almost like paragraphs, right? Or sections of words. And I even, I'm sure you're excited about this already before I even say it, two colors of crayons I was able to pick and put on this paper. So already starting to progress. And this is also a really good reminder that even scheduling is something that's creative. Um, this task break concept is something that we talked about in my therapies and we had to get creative with, like, you know, how long to do a task and, and then when to take a break and how long to take a break and what to do, what, what does a break look like and what tasks can you do and starting to organize all of that and scheduling is also creative. Unfortunately, I was not able to participate in therapeutic recreation at this time, um, which I was a little sad about because those are like all the fun activities that you can do. But 
Uh, I did draw a tattoo for my friend while I was <laughs> at Spalding, which is the second picture you see there. Um, and again, it was a time for still quiet engagement. And uh, if you notice something about the, the image of my handwriting on the left there, uh, it matches the font on this presentation because I decided to turn my handwriting into a font. So another little fun <laughs> creative thing that I've done in the past year. But at this point, after about three weeks at Spalding inpatient, um, I was discharged back home to my lovely little apartment and I lasted a whole month <laughs> with home care, but I only lasted one month. My body just it has struggled so much, completely shut down again, and I ended up in the neuro ICU. Just when you think like, how could things possibly get worse from what already happened? Neuro ICU. And at this point, I, I did become frustrated and feel a little bit of disappointment and confusion and think like, I, I thought I was past the worst, like, really? Like, what is this now? Um, but going back to that mindset and how mindset really is creativity too and telling myself, no, 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 I will not give up even when I'm knocked down and okay, I'm in this situation again. I can't change where I am right now. I can't change what's going on, but I can change and affect my mindset. And so how can I make this fun? How can I make this engaging? How can I make the best out of this? And I laugh because the picture on the bottom right, like I got creative in my approach with the staff because <laughs> I said, hey, listen, it's opening day for the Red Sox. I have to wear my Red Sox gear instead of wearing a hospital gown. And they went with it and they said, sure, why not? So even in the times that things feel like they're at the lowest, there can still be bright lights and particularly engaging with people around you. Because again, as I mentioned before, communication can be creative too, but so can your approach with other people um, along with that mindset. And what's really exciting is that even though I was back in the hospital, I progressed even more with my coloring. So look at this. I was able to go from no crayons to two colors of crayons to this kid's coloring page. And I, I love this because, you know, I'm 34 now. If I were to color this today and go show some random adult and be super proud of it, they would probably be like, uh, okay, cool, good job. Um, but this is huge to me. The fact that I was able to progress to this point of coloring and I share this to encourage everyone here to start simple where you are with what you have. You know, I, I didn't need to have some like painter's palette and progress in that sense. Really simple, a kid's coloring page and a tiny box of crayons. And that was enough to begin engaging in more creativity and gave me something to do with downtime. Like when I needed to rest, but didn't quite want to sleep. Okay, I can write, I can color, things like that. I actually also started st sharing my story on Instagram at this point, um, and, and the whole, that whole story continues from there. But after two months, I was finally discharged home um, and moved into my parents' in-law apartment. I was so in denial at this point in my recovery, like to be in my 30s and moving back home to my parents' house, I was like, you know, the walls were blank and I was like, I'm not unpacking, I'm not decorating the walls, I'm not hanging up curtains, I will not be here for a long time. Well, let's work on that mindset, right? I found myself sitting on the couch during my home care breaks and starting to hand letter and, and hand write quotes. And so the picture on the left behind me is uh, after I would start to write down these quotes on paper, I would add some design around the outside of it and then tape it to the wall. And so every single quote that I made and every single uh, creation that I ended up taping to the wall helped me to remove a little bit more denial. Post one of those, remove a little bit of denial. Post another quote, remove a little bit of denial. And I allowed myself to accept where I was and what was going on. And that helped me to progress even more in my physical recovery, but also emotional, mental, my whole well-being. Um, and so I also believe that home environment is really impactful, which is 
why I did end up putting those quotes up. Because if I'm going to hang up anything on my walls, why not make them creative? And same thing with that I am poster that I showed you before. I still have that here uh, in my apartment to this day because I believe that what we surround ourselves with does matter. And in the bottom picture here, um, I started to realize that it was also important to get creative with therapies too because let's face it, when your daily life is therapies and medical stuff, it can become really daunting and redundant and i was definitely still in denial by christmas of 2018 uh, or 17 because um i didn't want to decorate for christmas i i didn't want anything to do with it i just it felt like extra energy and my occupational therapist had different thoughts she showed up one day with my session to my session with these wonderful nice warm dim christmas lights and she was like here's our session today we're gonna put out Christmas lights. And so we did, and again, doing that to my home environment helped me to overcome some denial. And so engaging that creativity and increasing the positivity of what I would see on a daily basis really helped me in that mindset to progress, which was particularly important because just when you thought, is this girl done with the hospital yet? No, not quite. In the beginning of 2018, I got really sick and I ended up back in the hospital and then back to inpatient rehab. And this time I went to Encompass here in Massachusetts. Um, and since I had already been through rehab before, even though it was somewhere else, I knew basically what to expect. And so I said to myself, self, get creative, have fun, approach us with a great mindset. And that's exactly what we did. I had great staff with me, great therapists, and I had them convinced, I said, listen, I cannot get discharged from this rehab without playing basketball. So the occupational therapist agreed and we, uh, we even had to clear some snow off the court, but this was the last OT session that I had at that inpatient therapy uh, rehab before I got discharged. And I laugh about it now, but I really think it's important to engage creativity throughout recovery because again it becomes redundant it becomes mundane if you wake up every day just thinking like oh what therapies do i have to do or what medical appointment do i have today we, we have to add some fun in there in whatever way that resonates with you and i also see recovery like a dance in a way because let's be honest this rehab stay, the other hospitalizations I told you about, those felt like a lot of steps backwards or sometimes like steps sideways. And I could get really discouraged about that. But if I looked at it as the whole picture, like choreography of a dance, I was just making up a dance, okay? I was taking a step back in order to then move forward. I was taking a step to the side to add a little pizzazz. I don't know, but it, recovery can be like a dance and so i like to keep that with me because a lot of people will say like oh i've taken a step back well soon you'll take a step forward so keep dancing and uh the really great thing about this point too is this rehab stay i did get to participate in therapeutic recreation if you're not familiar with what that is it's basically another form of therapy you get like ptot speech uh, but it's really embracing creativity and we would do different things like planting seeds one day or another day we painted a birdhouse. But here's the thing that stuck with me about that and what I went home with is trying all different things because you never know what you're actually going to love until you try it and that it's okay to try all these different things. And I say that because there's one day in particular that Emily, the occupational therapist, handed me a box of watercolor pencils. I wish I had a picture of this, but she was like, oh yeah, you just color like colored pencils, but then you add water to the paper after and it turns it into watercolor. I thought it was the coolest thing to, <laughs> to happen, um, but it was also a really great engagement for again, mental health too, because there was something about the simplicity of coloring with the pencil and then the beauty of adding water and just watching it spread on the paper, it was just so cool. And I love sharing that because that for me personally is what ignited my passion to then go home 
and continue engaging in that creativity. And that's also my hope here today, is that at least one thing that I'm sharing with you is a spark for you to say, ooh, I could try that. Or, ooh, that sounds great. Like, you know, maybe I could take a class for that or something. But I, I ended up going home and I said, I'm gonna start making watercolors. So I asked my aunt, who is an amazing artist herself, if she could hook me up with some watercolor pencils, because that's what I knew how to do at the time. And I did, I went home and I started creating my own watercolors with these watercolor pencils. And eventually I progressed to using actual watercolor from a palette as well, and adding some ink and just drawing and so this progression, now let's pause and think back to hospitalization number one, where I couldn't even color on a kid's coloring page, right? So this is progress. And I didn't know I could do any of these things. It took me going out on a limb and trying something completely new in order to know that I could even do this. And I am a firm believer that not all things created need to be shared or sold. I'm gonna say that again, that not all things created have to be shared or sold. I think that's really important because we can get bogged down sometimes about, oh, well, what's the purpose of sitting down and doing this if I'm not gonna make money off of it or if I'm not gonna give it to someone? You know what? It's worth something to you and it's a gift to yourself. And I say that too, because I'm gonna share with you a whole bunch of different mediums that I started to practice and engage with and learn with over this recovery too. Um, but you know, it, it takes trying and it's okay to sit down and just do this by yourself, even if it doesn't get seen by anybody. And on the flip side, a little bit of encouragement, if you do end up sharing it with someone and if you're the person that someone shares their creativity with, get excited about it, right? I mean, if somebody draws a, a green line across a piece of paper and says, look what I made today, get excited about it. There's no, com there's no comparison of what this is supposed to be, it's whatever you create. And the more we can encourage each other to do that, the better. My aunt saw the, these paintings and she looked at me and she said, girl, you keep doing art because you have a gift. And that was so encouraging to me, I kept going with other things. In fact, I even started making greeting cards. I found that embracing artistic creativity avenues were something that as somebody on disability, like very low income, I couldn't buy gifts for people. Hey, at least I could make them a card. And again, if you make a card, it doesn't have to look like these cards. It could be simply drawing one heart on the front of the card and that's it. And you write on the inside and give it to someone. It's a gift, right? And so throughout all of this, the beautiful thing was I also started feeling purpose again. Because if we go back to, you know, prior to brain injury, I felt a lot of purpose in the things that I was actively doing out in the world, the teaching, the coaching and whatnot. But when you're at home or in a hospital bed and, and you're not surrounded by tons of people all the time, you don't have a job, like where is purpose? I mean, there's purpose just in waking up every day. There's purpose in, in completing your therapies every day. This added an additional purpose for me. It was something else that I could do beyond that medical realm. And I would just try and try and try. Even, I can't tell you how many of these cards or how many watercolor paintings. I also completely messed up and ended up recycling, right? And I, of course, I don't have pictures of those to share with you today, but it's all about just putting yourself out there to try all these different things. And, also progressing in trying these things helped me to get to the point where I felt comfortable enough to finally go out to my first social gathering. I've progressed enough medically and I progressed enough in all these different entities to say, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to my first social group since brain injury. And what I did was attend the Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts Creative Corner. Uh, the picture on the left is the first one I ever went to, where I went with an aide. I always went to all of them with an aide. And we created two string art activities together, and then I left. And again, I'm going to circle back around to how mindset is also creativity. Because 
on that day, I think the class is normally about two hours long. There's always a project to do and you do it at your own pace while you're socializing. I was probably there for about half an hour. I made two string arts and we left. From a mindset perspective, I could have actually gotten pretty down on myself that day and said, well, I only went for 30 minutes or I only created two string arts. But instead, there's reframing of that that can happen. And I wanna encourage this for everything on a daily basis. Take out the word only and just celebrate what was. Is I went there for 30 minutes and get excited about it. I created two string arts and get excited about it. Removing the word only or removing the word but. I went to this group, but I only created two string arts. No, I went to that group and I created two string arts, right? So remove the word only, remove the word but, and I feel like that's creative, practicing that mindset approach. And so through all this time, I also started to get to know other people, other survivors more, and I think that's really important too. And, and as you see in this picture, uh, the other picture is myself with uh, my friend Ryan that I also made at a creative corner. Uh, but I feel like this is a really good picture too of caregivers and family, friends and support throughout this journey. Um, and it's a great time to bring up the point of um, how do you help a survivor engage with creativity too? Because let's be real, there's definitely different boundaries and obstacles and limitations for every single survivor. The beautiful thing is that every time I would go to these groups, it was so cool to see how, may, I was actually sitting in a wheelchair, you can't see it there, but I may have shown up in a wheelchair and been able to participate in one way, while somebody else may have had a stroke and had maybe weakness or, or paralysis on one side of their body and have to participate in a different way. And their art is gonna look different and the way they approach it's gonna look different. But the whole process is really important. And also allowing yourself to try and fail or try and succeed and try different strategies. So also from that caregiver perspective, like this picture is so beautiful on the left because you can see the person that I went with, she was holding the page for me, but she let me be like, okay, where do I wanna put the string? And you know, when are we gonna pull it through the page to get the paint to come off? And so having support while also always making sure to check in with the survivor and ask like, how are you feeling about this? How can I help you? Rather than assuming that they do need help with something because part of creativity is trying and figuring out what to do if you don't succeed. And that can never happen if you're not given the opportunity to try and potentially fail or to try and succeed. So with that, I also feel like especially art in itself can help a lot with, yeah, the mental health, but also decision-making, problem-solving, fine motor skills, the, the visual acuity of it, spatial awareness, you know, where to do things on a page. So it is almost like rehab in a way, but we'll pretend it's not because we have enough rehab <laughs> as it is. Um, so again, this class really helped encourage me, like, Ali, try all these different mediums. And I want to encourage you with that today too. Like, go ahead, try a whole bunch of different stuff. I even had an art teacher friend, say a friend who is an art teacher, send me an embroidery kit. I had never done embroidery in my life before. I don't know how to do it. I didn't know I could do it. But again, I just gave it a try and I loved it and started making hats, my cute little niece over there. Um, and actually while I was in the beginning when I was in the hospital, obviously I had my verbal voice back. I didn't share when that came back. It did come back at some point in my recovery. But when I was nonverbal, my family used to make a heart with their hands in order for us to say, I love you, you know, when they were coming or going when visiting me. And so I took a picture of my own hands, making a heart and I embroidered it. And again, doing it just for fun, but also realizing, hey, these can make great gifts too, right? So at this point, I did start to share my creativity with more people. And I even started sharing it on Instagram. And I created this a brand called Embracing Unique. Because for me personally, I believe everyone has a story and everyone sort of has like this underlying theme when they share their own stories. And for me, it's the idea of embracing unique, being your own unique self and embracing that in everything that you do. So I decided, hey, 
I want to share this with the world because it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be something. And one, it kind of held me accountable for actually creating things. So I got excited about sharing it. But then two, starting to share it has helped encourage other people to do it as well. So there's something as simple at the bottom there as painting rocks and writing a word on it to the top left is embroidering a hat, right? And the other thing about this is to encourage you to also not judge yourself within this avenue of creativity or, or judge the value of what you're doing. It's really, not, I mean, if you're trying to sell something, sure. But even then, if you do, I can guarantee you the majority of human beings will actually pay more for something than you think it's worth. And like the, the hat in the top left, one person may look like that, look at it and not like it at all. One person might be like, I want that and I will pay you this much for it. And you'd be like, oh, wow, really? Like I just made that for fun. So remember, you know, it's not about necessarily being sold or shared or whatnot. But if you do progress to the point in creativity where you do start sharing it or maybe sell it or something, um, your the value you put on it is not the end value. And what other people see in it is, is often even larger than our own perspective. Because I think we can be a little bit hard on ourselves sometimes with that. So I wanted to add in that encouragement as well today. And you know, I also started being like, hey, why not take my art and put it on apparel? So the first apparel I ever did is on the left where I took my a watercolor that says hope and I put it on some apparel. And then the one on the right is the most recent that I did. And so I love playing around with all different art and designs and be like, hey, why not make some clothes out of it, right? And at this point, again, I wanna circle back around to reminding you of where this journey started. Because I think, right, I mean, you look at this picture, right? This acrylic painting. And I think it can be really easy today, right now, but also in life. Anytime you look at some end result, like what you see right now, to think, wow, oh my goodness, I could never do that. Like, look at where she is, I could never do that. Um, Remember where I was at the beginning of this presentation, where I was in a hospital bed, unable to, to color and barely be able to write, and yet progressed to the point of being able to complete an acrylic painting like this. Now, I didn't do this alone. This was another class from the Brain Injury Association of Massachusetts uh, that we've done virtually over the pandemic. And I have to admit something to you. I was so overwhelmed when I got the package in the mail that showed us like with the supplies and it showed us what we were gonna be painting that day. I took one look at this and I felt like the girl that was in the hospital bed that looked at a kid's coloring page and thought, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do this. This is impossible. But here is the beauty within what you see right now is taking things step by step. We received a completely blank white canvas in the mail and packages of paint and paintbrushes, right? Step number one, paint the background blue. That's it. That's all we had to start with. But when I looked at the picture of what we were gonna paint and said, oh my goodness, I can't do this. Look at all the lines, look at all the colors. I don't know where to start, left, right. <laughs> it felt like daily life, you know, when you have a, 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 a stack of papers on your kitchen table that you have to complete paperwork for and you're like i don't know where to start i'm so overwhelmed i'm just not going to do it at all well you take it step by step you take one pot paper out of the pile and you start with one thing before you know it that one thing is done and you move on to the next thing and that's how i was able to do this class and to complete this painting was take it step by step you know do the background and then create some weeds and then we create the water and then we create the moon, you know, step by step by step. And so remember when you look at this too, that this is where I started. Like, wow, this can be you too. And it may not be a coloring page and acrylic painting. Again, it's, it's whatever creativity or engagement is to you. But wherever you are today is simply a starting point. The more you try things, the more you engage in things, the more you practice things, the better you get at it, or the more you realize what you love to do and what you don't wanna do, what you're gifted in and maybe what you're not called to do, right? And I was recently reading a book where it had a beautiful example of, of something is, if I were to ask everyone on here, you know, I would say, you know, you have one month time. And after one month, 
I'm going to ask you to come to me with one piece of art. It has to be the best piece of art you've ever done. Come to me with that one piece of art. I'm going to grade you on it. This is from the book Atomic Habits, by the way. That result is going to be very different than if I said this to all of you here today. Okay, within a month's time, I want you to create 100 pieces of art. Bring them all to me, and I'm going to grade you on, on you know, with the best one out of those 100. Believe it or not, the people that bring 100 paintings to the table are likely to be graded better for one of out of the 100 than somebody that only did one the whole time. Why? Because of the practice, because of allowing themselves to try and fail or mess up and know that like, okay, I have 100 pieces of art here. This was the best one. This one, I'm definitely going to end up trashing, but it counts. It counts towards the 100. And if we just try to do everything with perfection right from the beginning, or that's the only goal, we're going to hit so many walls because perfection is not real. Even in the acrylic painting that you see here, I could easily pick out a ton of things that to me are imperfect about the painting. But what it says to me, honestly, it's perfectly imperfect. And no one else is going to sit here and pick it all apart with me, maybe if I asked. But I also say, you know, this is progress. And it's so much better to make progress than to never do anything at all or to be to or to have fear of starting something because of that need of perfection. This whole journey of brain injury has actually really helped me personally overcome that perfectionist mindset and realize like it's okay to try and fail or try and succeed. And in fact, like go ahead. Go ahead and try try and mess up, try and succeed, just explore. And I think the hardest person in our life is ourselves. I think we hold ourselves to a higher level of expectations than we need to most of the time. And, and the uh, attempt of striving for perfection is not the goal. The goal is to simply try. And remember that you get to do this every single day you get to wake up, you get to embrace your day. And what's amazing is that all of this journey, all of this creativity, all of this mindset has helped me progress from where I was in February of 2016 to where I am today. I actually just had, so February 28th of, of 2022 was six years for me. And so, I hope this journey for you is an inspiration of progress, progress of mindset, progress, yeah, of creativity, but also like the girl that you saw at the beginning of the presentation was very driven and very motivated, and I still am, but the girl at the beginning also had that level of perfectionism. And trust me, I still tr strive to do my best, even in this presentation, of course. I'm gonna strive to do my best but I'm never gonna be perfect and that's okay. And I really feel like creativity helps us to take steps in overcoming that because we can try and we can engage in different mediums and allow ourselves that journey. And I have gone from a wheelchair to walking and from nonverbal to public speaking today, which is just a miracle. And to remember too that like I still am who I am and you, every survivor on here, you are still who you are as well, regardless of the injury. There are still things within you that are ready to come out. Your gifts do not get eliminated with a brain injury. Those are embedded in you. There's still creativity that is ready to come out with this journey. And I will show you that through this reminder as well. At the beginning, I told you I used to be a Zumba instructor. Listen, I am not up on a stage dancing on my feet as a Zumba instructor anymore for an hour class. However, I decided, you know what, why not shift the perspective? I will take my love for dance and creativity of choreography and turn it into adaptive dancing. So allowing yourself the, the creativity of shifting. How can I do something I love or something I used to do and make it a new thing now and particularly without comparing to that former self? So now I like to take trending dances on social media and make them adaptive. Or remember that teacher you saw at the beginning of the presentation? To flip that in, that love of teaching and hey, I'm gonna turn it virtual and create an online course that chronic illness or brain injury survivors can participate in to create a vision board and learn how to 
uh, increase their their awareness of identity and doing a new thing, like what we're talking about right now. So allowing yourself that shift. And again, for those who are on here today, who are our caregivers, family, friends, providers, even like hopefully this is encouraging too to remember we're not trying to get back to who we were yesterday or who we were before an injury, but rather who can we be today? What can we embrace today with who we are, what we have, where we are? And so a couple action steps and pieces of advice as we wrap up for today is to simply start. Things that helped me to simply start were to find a free class. So check out your local brain injury association or if you're in a different country, organization. You know, try different types of creativity, whether it's art or other forms. Um, I also found my local library and senior center to be great places to try to find like these free classes. Check online. The, I see people social, posting all the time on social media, free classes that you can take to, uh, you know, just try. Try all these various things. See what you like. See what you don't like. You don't know until you try. You know, to simply start by maybe getting some supplies. They don't have to be the best supplies in the world. Although I do encourage not just getting like a kindergarten set from Walmart of the Crayola watercolor that is gone within one day of using it. Um, because the quality of supplies that you get does impact encouragement of what you're able to produce. And as a brain injury survivor, I can say there's enough stuff that already doesn't work the right way. I'd like my art supplies to work the right way. So if you do get supplies, you know, maybe even ask family, friends or a Facebook group or something, you can probably get free supplies. And then the other thing is joining a group, finding people who you relate with on the, cre the level of creativity that you like the most or a group that has a whole bunch of different mediums of creativity. Because when you're in community with people who you relate with, you're definitely going to be more encouraged to engage in those things. For example, these are a few of my friends who I've met through the journey. And my friend Liz, down on the bottom left, created this um, collage of a rainbow. Well, my friend Gary in the middle painted his faces of, of brain injury um, with his story of what he felt like um, creativity-wise. This is what shows his story. And then my friend on the right, Christabel, became a singer-songwriter after her injury and yet while we are all very unique people we encourage each other with embracing creativity that's something that we have in common and so the more you can be in community with other people who also embrace doing what you love um, it's very very encouraging but with that i want to remind you to always be who you are to do this without comparing yourself to other people remember to embrace your unique self to be inspired by others, but don't try to become them because you are the only you. And while you are being your unique self, you get an opportunity to continue spreading awareness. I mean, this is Brain Injury Awareness Month, depending on when you're listening to this. And we have an opportunity to share our stories, to share our creativity. These are all things I painted, by the way. Um, and to be the face behind what brain injury looks like and what we can do to support each other more. Whether again, family, friends, survivors, caregivers, uh, community partners, or everyone in between. This is how you can contact me if you have any questions about today's presentation or anything else about this journey of creativity. Um, I do encourage you to screenshot this and I will leave it up as we start to get into any questions that there might be. Um, but um, before this screen potentially goes away, um, you know, go ahead and screenshot it. Um, and as we do get into any questions, I just want to simply say thank you. Thank you for being here, listening to my own personal journey. Um, and I hope that something in here encouraged you today to go forth and take steps of your own as well. So if there are any other, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to also answer those. So just as a reminder. First, thank you so much, Allie. That was, thank you so much for sharing your journey. Um, I want to encourage people to write questions by typing into the question box in your control panel. And um, while we're looking to see if anybody has any questions, I thought we could go through some of the um, ways that our attendees shared that they love to, to be creative. They 
Someone, Anne wrote that she likes making flower arrangements. Someone else wrote business strategy development, music, photography, arts and crafts, word cloud designs, uh, writing stories, being ourselves, your thoughts, and someone someone shared that creative creativity is utilizing your mind to organize new thoughts and ideas. And I think that's all the people that listed different areas. Um, we have a music therapist on here who loved that you said not all creativity needs to be shared or sold because it's about the process. Yeah, so and, good. And someone says we're adaptive and resourceful. And a lot of thank yous for sharing. Um, someone says, Allie, you rock. <laughs> oh, oh someone, does, someone does their nails, doing nails. Oh, I never thought about that. That's a great point too. But all of them, all of them were great. I know I didn't say anything while you're reading them off, but really, really great different forms of creativity. Wow, y'all are creative. Cooking and gardening. Someone asked, what is your favorite piece of artwork that informed a mindset shift important for your recovery? Ooh, favorite piece of artwork that helped with the mindset shift. I would have to say in these, actually it's in these slides that I shared. When I shared the slide about the watercolors, the three frames of the watercolors that I had did when I got discharged from Encompass Rehab, I would say that um, one of those, um, because that was the time for me that I felt like I could actually do something than just surviving. Um, and it really also helped me feel encouraged to participate in things in addition to all the hard work I was putting into therapies. Um, and for the first time in my whole life, it helped me to believe that I could actually do art. I never believed that I could before. I would compare myself too much to other people and that would always stop me from actually painting. To be like, oh, I can't do it as good as so-and-so. But that, so that would be my answer. What a, what a good question, thank you. And someone else asked, who was your biggest support? Ooh, anything in particular, um, you know, support for, okay, well, I'll just answer in a couple ways. For, Recovery overall, my family has been the biggest support system for sure. I mean, I have a lots of great family, friends, community, everything. I'm really grateful for everyone. I have to put my family top because they have been there every single step of the way for me, whether in the hospital or at home or everything in between. Um, so definitely for the whole recovery, my family gets the shout out for that one. Um, for art in particular, um, my aunt, my auntie Dion, so shout out to her. She's definitely my biggest encouragement and supporter with all things art. And then we had a few people um, list other creative outlets. We have creating paper flags and cultural events, poetry, and planting plants, pastel painting, woodworking, uh, making jam, oh, those are great. And I'm looking to see if we have any more questions. A lot of thank yous again. Uh, someone says they're painting during your presentation. Oh, I love that. We actually, um, I also actually really encourage that because I do that a lot too. I actually embroider a lot. People that <laughs> see me on video calls and different uh, whether it's with the BIA or Concussion Compass or something, so many people see me embroidering during calls. Um, it actually helps with dual tasking um, and it helps to not be staring at the screen the whole time. So I do that too. I love it. I encourage that. So we have someone who uh, works with children and they said that sometimes children have difficulty looking past um, persistent failure. Do you have any do's or don'ts for going getting past what you consider personal failure and in, in trying yes another these are all great questions thank you so much um 
So the elementary teacher in me is also like lit up with passion about this question too. And, and from my own journey of overcoming that perfectionism, um, I have to say from a teaching perspective, um, the way that we set up this, the child for success is very important. And then the way that we respond to the child is also very important. So for example, if a child only hears feedback for what they did wrong, they're always going to think that they have to strive for perfection and that they never accomplish anything unless it's exactly what you showed them or exactly what the picture looks like, you know, or if they colored outside of the lines, oh shoot, like that's it, I'm done. Um, so if, if the reactions to the child is only negative criticism, um, and I get like there is um, constructive feedback that we do need to give all human beings in order to progress in anything, right? Um, but making sure to mix it up of, you know, maybe they did color outside of the lines, but you say something like, oh, I see that you chose the color purple, you know, like point out something else that they, that they chose to do and that they did successfully. Um, and then when they've completed it, celebrate it. And over time, like celebrate the end result. And if there are things that need to be fixed about it, in order to help them progress, but not become a perfectionist, give them space and time between the end result and when you give that feedback, right? Because again, like if I painted something and the first person that looked at it said, oh, I see you went out of the lines right there. Like, do you want to fix that? I'm going to be so discouraged. I'm never going to want to paint again. Or I'm going to feel like I can only ever show someone if it's perfect. So celebrate that it got finished even if it's not what the original intent was. And then over time, give a little space, maybe a couple of days or so, ask them like, you know, how do you think you did on this? What do you like the best? What do you think you could work on for next time? But not saying like, you need to fix this thing on this partic particular piece of art per se. So hopefully something in there helps with that. It's about feedback a lot. And someone asked, could dance be considered creative? Yes, I love dance. And um, if you saw, I'm not sure if you were here for the whole presentation, um, but I see recovery as a dance in itself, but absolutely, whether you're choreographing or just turning on music and moving, I love dance and I do adaptive dances on Instagram. So 100%, yes. And I don't wanna miss anybody. I think someone else said they create postcards. So um, I think right there, oh, have you recovered 100%? Someone asked, are you still in your recovery journey? I give 100% every day. I am definitely, I would not consider myself like a fully functioning human being. Um, I don't think anyone ever really is. I think everyone always has things to work on. Um, but I actually had a neurology appointment a year or so ago where lo and behold, the neurologist, I thought I was meeting them for the first time, but it's the neurologist that I had when I was inpatient at the very first hospitalization. And he looked at me, he goes, oh my goodness, you were at a 10% functioning level when I first met you and you're at like 60% now. And that was, actually I think that was two years ago. So not great with percentages. I say I do my best every day. I would not consider 100% because there's always room to improve, uh, but definitely way better. I'm still on the journey though. With that, I just want to say thank you so much again, and uh, thank you to everyone for attending today. You may always contact us at the Brain Injury Association of America if you have comments about this webinar series. Also, we did record this today, and it should be up on the Brain Injury Association of America website within about a week. So if anybody wants to revisit it at any point, um, you are able to do so. Thank you so much, and have a great afternoon. Thank you.